you all, you know who you are for your so, right. online support um, and your financial giving. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so go to higherplacechurch.com. If you're interested in music, go to angeloandveronica.com. All right, so today's message is part two of Done With Church. Ooh, honey. And, I mean, we, we hear that more and more and more and more. It's like done that. with I'm done. done. <laughs> with church. People are just done. You know, I, I just keep on hearing, oh, we're yes, tired man. of the games. We're tired of church politics. Oh, you know, you know we're tired of the Leandria basketball. Leandria said, F the church, F Ooh. Christianity. Yeah. Well, yeah, but she, she's, she, she's just a byproduct of what the gospel industry yeah. has produced. In other words, we shouldn't be surprised when this industry that doesn't even acknowledge Christ, you know what, when they just do everything opposite of what God does, and then we see artists come out like this that have just vile lives, and we go, oh, that's just, you know, she's just angry. No, no, no. She's a byproduct of the music industry. This is what the music industry produces. Creates. So, Creates. so that's, you know, the Bible says you reap what you sow. Yeah. So that's what we're reaping. We're reaping the idols that we worship. Mm. And we're not worshiping Jesus. If we just worship Jesus, we would reap that harvest. Mm. But no, we're reaping Kirk Franklin. And we're, we're, we're reaping, right. oh, oh, Fred Hammond and all these other big famous, oh, Snoop Dogg. Oh, man, he's a new gospel artist. And I just heard on the radio this morning by Donnie McClurkin, he goes, where are you other secular artists to come do more gospel albums? That's what he was reaching out. I couldn't believe that you were reaching out to sing gospel music. Why don't you reach out to save their souls instead of reach out to hear their yeah. songs? Come on, man. Let's wake up. But you know what? That's Radio One yeah. and all those other people. Reach out to people. save their souls. They don't care. Exactly. They don't care. So yeah. guys, am I passionate? Yeah, I'm passionate. I'm passionate about you knowing the truth. It was time for us as Christians and as listeners of gospel music to wake up from our deep sleep thinking that, oh, you know, this music is so anointed. No, it's annoying. Okay, it doesn't come from God. It comes from money. It comes, they might as well be, do, be doing music. Secular music, what's the difference? Yeah, many of, much of it is false Must, worship. Uh, it's it's worship not, we can't speak Christ. for every, you know what, Veronica, we can't speak for no, everybody. No, no. Right, we don't want to generalize. Absolutely, Absolutely not. Because we but, were one of those. But that's part of the reason, again, that all of these things are part of the reason yeah. people are done yeah. with church. Yeah, but you know what, so, again, you reap what you sow. So if you have been following imposters, listen to me, if you have been following imposters and you've been after the wrong people, well then, yeah, that's right. right. And, and so last week, just to right. just to summarize just a little bit and to start getting into this message, uh, we talked about the true church and the false church. Now, the true church preaches the unadulterated word of God. Okay, the true church edifies. The true church encourages. The true church corrects. Okay. Now, the false church <clears throat> brings. What? False doctrine. They bring Ooh. false teaching. They twist. They pervert <laughs> the word of God. That's right. Okay? And um, they use mm -hmm. and abuse people. Now, at first, they might flatter you and fatter um, you. But fa fatter you? Fat <laughs> yeah, maybe fatter you too. Um, flatter you. <laughs> <laughs> but they end up but you'll end up being used and abused by false brethren. Okay? Yeah. So if we can just understand that mm. then we we can uh uh really start go, going forward again you know um before so we it, get before we get started i just yeah. want to thank you for all the research that you do week after week day after day exposing all this foolishness okay because i don't have the time to do that i only have time to be in the bible and, and to pray and, and to get you know i don't have time to be on the internet all day because i have to work but you do this work day after day. Yeah. You're diligent. And you know what? God, you, you, you're reaping a seed. I'm going to, I'm going to say this. It's, it, I have to say it's really in, for selfish purposes. Because you know what? All this research does and, and, and study of the word, it makes me free. 
Wow. It makes me free because it's the truth that makes well, you free. It's knowing and it. So, so knowing anyway, I, I know, you know, it's what we have to do, right. you know, to, you know, for the people and for Higher Place Church. Correct. So, so moving on, if you are done with the false church. I am done. Say amen. Amen. I mean, that, that is, that's awesome. <laughs> if you're done, if you can recognize a false ministry, a false church, false teaching, False mm. prophets mm. and be done with that and walk away. That's, that's exactly good. what your response should be. Okay, this is this is hugely important, guys. Okay, because you're going to be spinning your wheels. Mm. All right, mm. being taken advantage of, being used and abused. That's right. And and nothing is going to bring forth fruit in your life. Well, what's going to bring forth, Veronica, is anger, and anger does not produce the righteousness of yes. God. Because what happens is you become frustrated yeah. and you become complacent and you become and you don't know why. Yeah. But you yeah. but but the thing is you, you will know by the end of this message why you're feeling that way. Yeah, and what you said about people being uh uh how do you say getting angry with the church, angry and resentful with the church, and then getting angry and resentful towards God. And it's like you're Correct. misdirecting your you're, anger right. and your resentment at that point. That's true. So um so if you're done with the with but uh so if you're done with the false church, praise God. But if you are done with church period, guys, that's not good. Um and again if you have participated in in a false church, in a false ministry, take ownership of that. Done it. Okay. Been there. Yeah, done, done it. We're, we're, we're Many times, people. Okay. We're going to talk about we're, one. Such were some of you, Paul said. That's right. That's, that's right. right. And, and when we know uh, better, then we can do better. Come on. Okay. Ooh, so that's good. So don't give, but guys, don't give up your search for a true church and a true ministry. Yeah. Okay, and a true. Uh, uh, body of believers, okay, that are true Christians, not not false brethren, as the the Bible describes. Okay, they're out there. They're just uh, a lot fewer. <laughs> it's right. just a lot fewer. So, yeah. but God will direct you to That's them. Right. Exactly. Um. So it's not it's not just about going to church, guys. Mm-hmm. We have to remember we are the church. We are the church. So when you realize that you are the church. This will help you find where you need to be. Mm-hmm. And also, I want to say, when you trust in the church, you are trusting in men. <sighs> You're trusting in men. And the Bible never says to trust in man, mm-hmm. but to trust in God. That's right. Don't trust Angelo and Veronica yeah. or anybody else. Okay? You right. need to have discernment, and you need to seek God for yourself. Read his word for yourself. You know, right. just like for many years, I... I I would just take what the pastor said as the gospel Mm. and quote some of their foolishness because we were under imposters. Mm -hmm. So I would take, you know, what is that? Oh, my makeup. (laughs) 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 Can I I borrow Kirk Franklin's lipstick? I don't know. Whatever. Um, whatever. Moving on. Um, (laughs) So, you know, we we are encouraging you. And this, this is another thing that's huge. We need to learn how to about, think about church in a different way. Well, why, need... why don't you think about it the way God thinks about it? Okay. Why don't you think about it the Your way makeup. God? Yes, <laughs> Your makeup. Yes. Well, give me a kiss off me. <laughs> no, no. What I'm saying is, is that we need to start thinking about church in a different way. Well, well the different way would be the way God perceives it, the way God yes. sees it. Yes. Yes. So, uh, and, and not, and I want to say specifically, and we have to stop thinking of church in terms of the 501c3 corporate church Shh. entity where the gospel cannot be fully preached. Guys, this is huge. The organized 501c3 tax exempt church was put into effect by Lyndon B. Johnson in 1954. And that, what it, that was to silence the church because you cannot speak about the vital issues of the day because there is supposed to be no political speech so you can't speak against uh, abortion which is murder you can't speak against homosexuality which is sexual immorality so what can you speak about you know grace 
Over. Right? Well, we can name our church. But, higher, but you can't higher, speak truth. How about if we go higher so place, grace church truth. grace? Grace? No. Grace, higher place. <laughs> it's like everything is. Uh, I mean, yeah. Veronica, we have yeah. gotten We've off gotten the beaten so path. Far away. We're We've so gotten far so far away. Here. We've gotten so far away from the truth. Truth. That we don't even know what the truth is anymore because we've been lied to. So don't uh, uh, rule out a different way of doing church and a different way of thinking about church. Remember in the book of Acts, mm. churches were in homes. Wow. Churches were in homes. Wow. Like right wow. now, today, we're having church in our home. We're With bringing beautiful you daughter. church yes, via online in our home, so uh, so we want to. Uh, I want to share this experience just a little bit. Um, it's very painful to look back on some of our church experiences. Well, it's, you know what, Veronica? It's called being transparent. Yes, and it's absolutely. not about telling a story to make to pull somebody else down. It's about being unveiling what's in darkness that will come yeah. to light. Yeah. And see, the thing is, is that our experiences are really what we can minister about. Mm -hmm. And we have 26 years of experience yeah. of being in this church world. I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I just wanna say this. If there were two people on this earth right now that could say what Leandria Johnson said, F the church, F Christianity, okay, it would be Angela Veronica. I promise you, and I, I don't say that in a disrespectful way, I say that in an honest way, of way that we've been, what we've experienced in 26 years, the foolishness that we've been around, that we've, we, frankly, we didn't even know about this church entertainment. I mean, they have William Morris Agency booking acts into churches. Think about that yeah, for a second. Yeah, we were one of them. Correct. <laughs> So it so it seems that we chose yeah. the wrong ministries, the wrong churches early on in our spiritual walk out of ignorance. No, because um, what happened was, blessed a man who walked not in the council of men. We were with William Morris. Correct. Agency, so some of our church, some of these churches just wanted us for our talent or our notoriety. We didn't realize this at the time. Well, we didn't pay attention didn't, to, to, to know, King David. Who, you know what I'm saying? We had no, we paid no attention to King. We David. thought, oh, gospel music, Christian music, this is very small time, and because we were right. doing it just to serve the Lord. Correct. You know? We weren't trying to be superstars yeah. in the church like some of these gospel artists think they are in their minds. And it's amazing. It's like nobody even knows you. Like I tell people, I like, take them down the mall and see how many people ask for their autograph. <laughs> nobody. Okay. I'm just telling you how it is. So, you know, we weren't looking, hold on, we weren't looking to go to the mall to get our, so people could run up to us and go, oh, can I have your autograph? Please. We're here to minister the gospel of Christ. That's what we were doing from 1991 till 2018 and beyond. We're not going to change. I have tapes of us speaking back in 1991, 92. It is no different than what we're speaking right now. The problem was that we were partaking and unfruitful works of darkness and didn't even realize it because we were not in the word of God. Because see, if we were in God's will, we would have never been in those places. Okay? Well, as much as we know the word of God now, you know? True. So, I mean, you, you got to start somewhere, you know? Mm -hmm. Everybody is growing. Um, so I want to say, uh, and I want to get into this, and I want to share this, this story, because um, in one of these churches... Uh, the pastor actually tried to divorce us. Yeah. When there were no marital problems, mm -hmm. when there were no ground, absolutely no grounds for divorce, there was no sexual immorality. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just so happens we have not, you know, we have not been unfaithful to each other in 26 years. The whole time we've been married, praise God, by the grace of God. So we had no... There was why no would I look anywhere else? But, yes. See, and why, Amen. Monica? Good answer. You. Yeah, but what, what I'm saying is, yeah. why would you look somewhere else? Yes, thank you. Exactly. If you're a man, yes. you know, what? Shane, you just got married. We want to say congratulations to you and Tiffany. Yeah. And you know what? We love you guys. And I want to say this. Keep your eyes on Tiffany. That's your wife. The girl next door is not your wife. That's right. Okay? 
keep your eyes on your wife that God has ordained for you. So, uh, so there were no grounds for divorce, no sexual immorality. The spiritual abuse and control Ooh. became so severe that this pastor actually made a prescription. <laughs> made a prescription. And part of that prescription was a sabbatical, a six-month sabbatical. It's the prescribed plan. Um, so we could not earn a living now at that time. Now, guys, just so you understand, we don't make any money off of our albums. Jeez, what a concept. Okay? We don't make any money off of our albums. Uh, except for, you know, what, what we do, uh, you know, selling on our website and when we travel. I mean, that's just the, the, the unfortunate truth right. of the music industry. So, um, so our, well, our living dependent on traveling, well, that we could not do that. Well, that explains 501c3 because that's how churches can bring people in using the 501c3 tax status. So, so uh, describe your, your time at working at the oh, church my goodness. For, for no pay. Well, you know? it's funny because I'm, I'll never forget my cousin, Barbara. She, she gave us a car. Now, it wasn't a Mercedes Benz. It was a car. And I don't know about you, about me, but I'm not caught up in, the, in what my car looks like or, oh, it's got fancy wheels or it's a Cadillac or it's a Bentley. No, it was a nice little car for me to drive, to back and forth to work, because we couldn't afford a car, so she gave us a car. What a blessing that was for her to give me that car. Now, I drove her to work at this church, because he said this was the prescribed plan, and, you know, again, this is a guy who's got a, you know, 3,000, 3,500 seat church today, and it's probably, you know, whatever, um, and, and it's an in and, in, and, it's an in and out yeah. kind of revolving door because of the people once they realize what doctrine he's preaching they go which they shouldn't go to begin with but anyway it's amazing because I drove to work and I parked right next to his Cadillac and I and I, and I wasn't put, parking it next to his Cadillac to make to make him feel bad or whatever but I'm no, I'll never forget one day I was outside getting out of my car and he comes out of his office and he goes I don't ever want to see that heap of junk in my lot again. So you take that car and you and you bring it home and you walk to work because I don't want that car in my lot. This is a godly man. Okay. Okay. So anyway, I mean those who have contempt for the poor have contempt for God. Oh no no no. No yeah. no God came Jesus came for the rich. What are you crazy? Wow, wow, wow. Well go go on. Anyway, but I, I'll never forget it, you know and, and I just in order to do this prescribed plan because he said, you know, that I had a hardening in my heart and I was angry. Well, yeah, I was angry at him. <laughs> I mean, what a concept. And that's c perfectly normal. Right, right. I was w completely I within my rights. And if I was really angry, you would have been hurt. So, but, so, but, but you weren't, sir. Anyway, so now he tells me, you got to go outside and sweep rocks out front of the church. I'm like, sweep rocks? He goes, well, get all the rocks off. I mean, you're talking about a huge 3,000, at the time, about 15, 1,200, 12 to 1,500 members. Yeah. That's a big parking lot. So I'm sweeping the rocks. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and there are witnesses. Oh, absolutely. To this day, there are witnesses. Absolutely. Yes. My Freemason friend, mm -hmm. really, the bell is on. Witnesses. Witnesses yeah. for that. Yeah. Correct. Sweeping rocks. So when I was, I was sweeping rocks in this, and he would drive by his car, smiling at me. You know, on his cell phone, and just yeah. you know, he it was like a nice power trip. I didn't say I didn't think anything of it, but anyway, other than I was frustrated, so I'm out there sweeping rocks, and then this guy walk, drives by. I won't mention his name. He goes, "What are you doing, man of God?" I go, "Well, I'm just doing what the pastor told me to do," and this is what we do. We do whatever the pastor tells us to do. If the pastor says, and, and I'll, never, I'll never forget the time I went to a baseball game in Chicago. We're driving down. And we're in the car, and, and this guy next to me goes, Hey, man, don't talk to the pastor. Don't talk to the pastor. What do you mean? Shh. Don't, don't, don't wear him out. I'm, like, I'm just talking to the pastor. He goes, I'm like, really? And, and, the, and the pastor didn't say nothing. We get to the ball game, and the guy says, Hey, man, let's get, let's get pastor a nice leather jacket. Like $300 for those. I didn't have $30. I mean, if I had it, I wouldn't be buying him a leather jacket. How shameful. How shameful. Right. Yeah. Anyway, that was another story. Yeah. yeah. Well, and he should have bought it. He should have. He, he felt 
in his heart he wanted to do that. Why would go he put that it. on you? Yeah, go for it. Anyway, so That's awful. So the guy says, you know, so this guy saw me sweeping rocks. He says, okay, look, this is ridiculous. So he goes and he talks to the king, I mean the pastor, <laughs> and he says, um, hey, what, what in the world is this guy doing with all his talent? He plays keys, guitar, writes, produce, sings, went to college for music, and you got him sweeping rocks outside. So I guess this guy was higher up in the Freemasonry chain. So he actually heard him, and my next assignment was, oh, yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah. Yeah. What am I done? Yeah. Get this kid. So, so he, guy to, to what he was trying to do, he was trying, he was trying to humiliate me. That's yeah. what he was trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. So now he brings me in, and now I'm full time writing and producer for his radio show, television, and he tells me to create a, a studio in this church. So I had the skill, the ability to develop, develop a system, and uh, I, I wired everything. I had this guy help me wire everything into the studio, and I had my little office. And then he had his, his church office, and I could not believe the things that I heard. What? Yeah. About the mock board? The mock fake board. It's a uh, fake, in other words, uh, yeah. churches like, are supposed to have like, that, like, like, that, They're supposed to have a, a board of directors when you're that large of a church, I guess. I don't know. To have some accountability. <clears throat> True. But his was, is, was fake. It was absolutely phony, because he, he says, he's like, I got my mock board, and these people think that. Like, he think, thinks that I'm if there. I so only, people think that they're being held accountable when they are not. I should have pressed all, record. Yeah. I should yeah. have pressed record. But, you know, thank God. And here I was, you know, his prescribed plan, but he wasn't teaching me the word of God. He wasn't encouraging me to read the word of God. He wasn't encouraging me to read it for myself. Wow. He wasn't encouraging me to, right. to, to cross my eyes. And, That's how and they get one over on eyes. you. That's how they get one over on you. Right. But this guy, Joe Mano, who was a man of God, yeah. overheard a conversation about our marriage, and he said to me, I think I said the story before, but I'm going to share it again no, real quick. No, I think because the pastor's wife rebuked you or something. Yeah, because I called him Pastor Dickow. I mean, whatever his name. Oh, okay. All well, right. Well, whatever. Whatever. Th that is what it is. If you need, if you need to know, if, if you are in the Chicago area, uh, please feel free to reach out to us and we will tell you who this who this person is right. because people in that area need, they to, need know. to know yeah they need to know i, mean, you know, I didn't mean to say that mm -hmm. but it's okay you know i mean again paul called people out too so yeah. sorry yeah. sir right. you need to be yeah. rebuked and anyway so this guy here overheard the conversation he said let me, let me take you to lunch he took me to lunch yeah. and i explained to him what was happening in our, in our marriage which was really nothing we we weren't angry toward each other we weren't I mean, we had some differences as far as what he was teaching you and what he was trying to do to me, mm. divide us up. Right. So he's, right. Satan is the, 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 the accuser of the brethren. Yeah. He's yeah. the one that divides people. Right. Right. So he was trying to do his very and best. Let no man separate what God is joined together. Well, again, so what happened was, so this Joel looked at me and he goes, hey man, he says, uh, do you read the Bible? I'm like, well, you know. He goes, well, yeah, you know. He goes, Where's your Bible? I go, it's right here. It's a little small little Bible. He goes, oh. He said, well, why don't you try opening it up and let's go to Matthew. So he starts reading me scripture. And we start talking. He goes, ne have you never heard this before? He said, I'm like, no, I never, I never heard that before. He goes, he said, well, that's your problem. You don't know the word of God. So he rebuked me and he challenged me Amen. And I thank you, Joe, for that challenge, for what you did for me. Because yeah. you stepped up your faith it, that was in you, and you strengthened me enough that I could now see the truth for myself, what was happening in our marriage. Because this guy's not, he don't care about your marriage. And he didn't. Okay, to this day. Okay? So so what happened was, you know, I, we finally got away from it because of the word of God. Yeah, yeah. It's the word of God yeah. that brought it things to light. Yes. It brought, brought it to light. In other words, okay, this this guy's an imposter. He's a fraud. He's a fake. He's all into his money and his cars and his houses and his yeah. stuff. Yeah, he and he's not into the poor. He doesn't care about the poor. He don't care about the lo lonely, 
the lonely, the broken hearted, you don't the widows. You care about the poor. You don't care about the gospel. There you go. Um, so I, I just want to add that I consider it my fault because I had uh, went to him for a, not even something that had to do with our marriage. It was nothing personal at all. And um, and this, so this was the counsel that I re, that I received that I was told. Um, oh, you know. If you if you want to help your husband, you'll do this. You sure. Know? And so so I gave this person way too much power, believe, believing that he had some answers. You know. And, and guys, and, honey, this is only one situation. And, and, and I was going to say, a pastor actually can counsel some, can have good counsel. Absolutely. Counsel, but when you're dealing with, uh, in this case, a false prosperity teacher um no i mean i did not receive the right counsel and i gave that person too much power so uh instead of going to god and hearing to god for myself okay so this is incredibly dangerous all right when the pastor and, and i want to get into this when the pastor is is what the bible calls a hired man hmm. Or, or a wolf. Okay? So no, I, I just want to say this, you know, that, that a lot of times, you know, again, we're giving this, these people way too much power. Thank you. Exactly. And that's, what, go, and that's and, what I did. And I want to say this. If a real man of God is pastoring a church and you have a difference or you have a difference, an indifference or, or, or a, a, you know, a debate with each other about a certain thing. Disagreement. A disagreement. Okay. And you leave that church, okay? If he's your brother, why, why, how come they never reach back out to you? I, I, can, I can't name the pastors on my one hand, yeah. on my one finger, yeah. that ever reached back out to me. Said, how are you doing, man? Yeah. How's your marriage doing? Sure. How's your life doing? Yeah. You know what? Yeah. I even reached out to this guy to apologize to him to, that, that if I did something wrong, if I said something offensive, then please forgive me. Okay, but that's but that was for for me, not for him. But what I'm saying to you is, if you have a disagreement with a pastor, and they never call you again for the rest of your life, there you go. There's your false teachers right there. Because if they're real brothers in the Lord, they're going to reach out to you. And you know, I'm talking to somebody out there today. Some people that know Angelo and Veronica personally. Many pastors who have just, for whatever reason... Just does, don't even care. You know, it's like, really, if you really care about our lives, why don't you just reach out and say, hey, That's you know what? And we know where we are. And, That's where and, we are. And, and you say, okay, well, how, well, why don't you reach out? I have. Yeah, yes. I have yeah. to multiple yeah, pastors, I, I, yeah, I have, only I to have my to chagrin, too. Too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that when I start speaking truth, like this 501c3 nonsense, okay, that the church is under, okay, yeah, yeah, no, I just want to get into these scriptures because it's in, it's so important to know mm -hmm. if your, your, I hate to say, your pastor, your leader, yeah. who, whoever, is a, if they are a hired man or a shepherd, and we're going to prove this to you in the word of God. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, Jesus said in Matthew 7, 15, 16, beware of false prophets, okay? False prophets bring false Doctrine. This person was bringing a false doctrine, a, a false prosperity gospel. Mm -hmm. Okay, prosperity. Now, I hate to use that word because prosperity is completely biblical in terms of the word of God, but they twist it and they pervert it for their own personal gain. So it says here, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. wolves. Okay, so they have sheep's clothing on, meaning they disguise themselves as ministers of the gospel. And you will know them by their fruits, by their brittling watches, and their mm -hmm. pink airplanes, and their helicopters. What pastor needs a helicopter? Right, because you see what's important to them. Things. People aren't important to them. Things are important Barbara, to them. Barbara and, and uh, um, Christian, please. I'll have a pink helicopter as well. Anyway, that's only like so 34 Jesus million. said, Matthew 10, 16, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst 
of what's God. Ooh. You are sent out as sheep That's in right. the You're midst a of wolves. Mm -hmm. It says, therefore, be wise as serpents, mm -hmm. harmless as doves. Were we wise? No. no. Not early on. No. Are we wise now? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you'll okay. know them by their fruits. Yeah. We can recognize things now, whereas yeah. we could not before. So, guys, this can this gift of discernment can be uh, uh, can get better. Okay, Absolutely. can be exercised and uh, as you practice it. I want to read so, this here. Yes, please. John ten eleven and thirteen. Now, most of the prosperity preachers, and if you are following one of them, you know that they've used this scripture really craftfully for their own generous, generous selves. And it's John 10.10. 10. And it says, he said, Did the devils come to kill, steal, and destroy? But I have come to give life and that more abundantly. And that's where they stop. Every once in a while they'll go to 11, where it says, I am the good shepherd. Oh, and I just want to okay. say that scripture, it's like the Lord showed me that scripture that, okay, what is that abundant life? Well, that abundant life is a life free from the devil killing, stealing, and destroying. Ooh, come on, that's, Veronica. That's what I, I believe that the abundant life, yeah, yeah. The, you know, I, I create definitions for myself. So I, I, well, I don't like that, I don't like that, that, that definition because you know, like I, it, I think um, I can't get my pink jet. Oh, right, right. I mean, thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah. You know? Okay. <laughs> anyway, so I love this scripture. Again, this is Jesus talking. This is not anybody else but Christ. Okay, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Okay, not for the Bentley, for the sheep. But a hireling, oh, verse 12. Now we get interesting here. Because now Jesus is starting to expose all of the crooks and the imposters that we've been talking about for two and a half, three years. But a hiring, hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees on his blear jet that you bought for him. Good going, guys. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. Okay, the hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. He cares about his Brentling watch and his Rolex and his in his Bentley and his in his airplanes and his jets and his big building. And actually, they don't even care about the big building because that's just to get you in. Because a bigger building gets more people and more people gets more money. Wake up, people! Run! R-U-N. Run, people. Run for the hills. You know what? Take take your sh your, your yeah. sheep self. Yeah. And I that's read, that's no, no. how serious the, this is. No, the same guy who called, this, this one of the followers that was at the baseball game, called him a sheeple. Called him a dumb animal. Dumb animal. That's right. Yes. Good job. I remember, that. I remember yeah. you saying. And he went back to his church. This Beautiful job. Thinks of people as dumb animals. Are you under a shepherd or a hireling? Please, guys. We, what do we gain by this, Veronica? I know. I know exactly. You know what we gain? They don't call us. Yeah. Yeah. They don't invite us in. You know what? I don't. We were part of this prosperity circuit. And we're not going to go to you. If you, we get invited to a church, Veronica, we're not going to backtrack Absolutely. for money. We're going to preach what, what we're going to preach the gospel and yeah. truth. Yeah, that's, that's right. It. So how? So guys, this is this is the the all important question: Are you under a shepherd or a hireling? Ooh. Okay, hireling does uh, uh, serves the Lord supposedly. Uh, even though they're really not serving the Lord, and they do it just for the paycheck, just for money. It's the way of it's Balaam. Gig, Balaam loved the wages right. of unrighteousness. That's right. He wanted to get paid. Okay. <laughs> so, are you under a shepherd oh, or a hireling? Okay. So, how wolves attack? Because wolves hmm. and the hired man work 
together. They, they run in are, packs. They're a team. They run in packs. That's right. Well, can you read that? Yeah. Investig is, investigation and elevation of predators. Evaluation. You said you read that. Right? Investigation and evaluation, evaluation of predator evaluation. kills and attacks. And mm -hmm. this is from an actual uh, PDF that I found describing how wolves attack sheep. Mm -hmm. And it says a pack animal wolf will attack a single or a small number of animals at one time. Right. The attacks are normally to the rear of the animal, okay, when they least expect it. Yeah. From um, the back. And it says yeah. one or two wolves do most of the work resulting in a number of animals being able to feed. Wolves attack this way to protect themselves. So wolves yeah. do everything yeah. to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. So just a few facts about wolves and, and shepherds and sheep, okay? Wolves run in packs mm -hmm. and are cowards by themselves. That's, oh, that's why so wolves true. run in packs, okay? And these people, oh my goodness. There are leaders of the pack. You know that? There's a song. Leader here, but, of the pack. Yeah. That there are leaders of the pack who do most of the killing, okay? So there are certain leaders. They're the ones who do the killing. Oh, listen. Wolves don't just kill to eat. They do it for the sport of it, okay? Because it's fun. Wolves attack sheep when they least expect it, okay? Um, if this, this actually, this PDF was actually pretty graphic. I, I, I was like not gonna read that, but it was very graphic about how the wolf attacks the sheep. And mm -hmm. they do it when they least expect it. They do it in secret. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is dangerous when sheep wander away from the flock. Sheep have no sense of direction without the shepherd. Mm -hmm. uh, the sheep without the shepherd cannot survive the attack of wolves because wolves, sheep cannot protect themselves, okay? The shepherd has to protect them. Correct. And, and this, very, very important, the wolves' strategy in their attack, and this goes into what we're talking about today, the wolf's strategy in their attack is to get the sheep alone. Because if the wolf can get you alone, he's got you. Absolutely. And that's, that's where that elitist spirit, that controlling spirit that a lot of these churches operate under. Because they want to maintain their control of your finances. Really, I mean, that's really, in, in, in the 501c3 ministry will expose that. If we're going to talk about that in detail. When are we going to yes, do that? Yes, another time. Very important information yeah. that so, you, as a church member, need to know. Okay, so let's let's go through this. Uh, when the enemy seek, what the enemy seeks to do when you are done with church. Mm. Okay, so just just a few things here. Uh, when enemy seeks to do. Is to number one disconnect believers. The yeah. enemy seeks to disconnect believers from other believers in the body. Guys, we 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 feel that right now. We have a church, you know. We feel more disconnected. That also has to do with social media, mm -hmm. and I mean, we are more disconnected as a society right now sure. than ever before. Um, so the the enemy does that in order to connect us to false believers, into the false church, into false religion, because we're so lonely, we're so desperate yeah. for, to, for somebody to talk and to. You're better friend. off being by yourself. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, it's because of social media, we, you allow us into your home. Okay, so you have children, they need to hear this as well. Okay, don't put, pawn them off onto church ministry. No, you take responsibility. They're your children. We have our children here in church. You know what? It's important that they hear the same information that you're hearing. So it may be a little bit uh, deep for them, but eventually they'll get it. Yeah, they'll have that absolutely. inside of them. You know, and uh, just give me a glass of chocolate milk, Alex. Anyway, anyway. So, but anyway, but, but the thing is, is that uh, again, but at the very same time, we need one another. We desperately absolutely. need one another. The body of Christ is incomplete when you are by yourself. Okay. Ephesians 4, 15 and 16, and so become more and more in every way like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. Under his direction, the whole body is fitted together perfectly, and each part in its own special way helps 
the other parts Come on. so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. So each part sure. helps the other parts. How can we get help if we're not well, uh, a well, part the arm, of the true body of well, Christ? Well, the arm helps the, the hand. Right. And the hand helps the fingers. And, and the fingers, you know, help other things. So the feet, I mean, our body is, 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 the, is, is a good analogy the of, the of the whole. Yes, temple exactly. of the Holy Spirit. So 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10. Um, mm. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Guys, you want the profit mm -hmm. that comes from being in a true, being a part of, yeah. Of a true body of believers. Amen. Okay, as opposed to, you know, Wolves. the false church. Yes. Um, it says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is, uh, I'm sorry. Um, so to one is given the word of wisdom, to another word of knowledge, to another faith, to another gift of healings, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, and to another interpretation of the tongues. Mm -hmm. So just a, a great example of why we need one another. Yeah. Nobody has all those gifts. You know, and I want to apologize no. to my children for putting them under that kind of teaching as well. Because they, it affects their lives when you put yourself in harm's way. Then you put your children in harm's way. So I apologize to you guys. Yeah. Yeah. If we put, put you in a church that was in a bad situation for you. That's right. You know? That's right. All right. Number two, um, I um, what the devil seeks to do when you're done with church, cre it creates, it can create bitterness mm -hmm. and offense. Mm -hmm. Okay, resentment can grow when we are isolated. There you go. One of Satan's best strategies is to destroy us by getting us to fester and fester and fester mm -hmm. in unforgiveness. True. He, Hebrews 12, 14 and 15, pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble and by this many become undefiled. So when you're bitter, you, 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 that, bitter, that bitter, just bitter. falls onto other people and other people become bitter. Okay? Matthew, That's yeah, what Matthew, we don't the, want. Matthew 12, 24, 12. And be, again, Jesus. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Yes. And this is, this is very important because there is more of a chance for you to fall into lawlessness mm -hmm. without a body of believers, without someone holding you, you accountable. Go. There you go. Lawlessness in your life will cause your love to grow cold. This is how people's hearts become hardened mm -hmm. through sin in their lives. All right, number three, it removes your protection, okay? Um, if the, again, just like the, uh, uh, the wolf and the sheep, if the enemy can get you alone, mm -hmm. he's got you. That's it. Okay? Uh, Proverbs eleven fourteen, where no counsel is, the people fall. And in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Again, we're talking about true counselors from Amen. true ministers yeah. of righteousness. Yeah. Okay? You can yeah. get good counsel Absolutely. from the people of God if they are true brethren. Okay? Very important. Now, 1 Corinthians 5, 1 through 4 and 5. And um, this, is, this is kind of... you got kind of have to follow me with this. Um, this talks about, it is actually, uh, Paul is talking to the Corinth church. He said, it's actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you. How do you? And, su and such sexual immorality as is not even named among the Gentiles. That, that a man has his father's wife. So this was incestuous, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together, this was his solution. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together along with my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, my point here is 
that in that day you were you were excommunicated for being in sexual immorality so as not to infect the rest of the church. But that was back then. It has nothing to do with today. We would do, we we, Got we love everybody. <laughs> of course. And, the, and oh, well, come on part. in. Come on in with your sexual self. Come in with your perversion. Yeah. So that you know, it's like, would you like a pedophile to babysit your child? Exactly. Come on, people. Let's understand what Paul was saying here. He wasn't a grumpy old Jew. But my, my point in this is <laughs> that being excommunicated, okay, and thrown out mm. uh, or, or saying, you know what, you can't come here anymore, um, is the same. In this scripture, it's the same as being delivered into the hands of God. Satan. Absolutely. I went to a church where a pastor said, it's okay to be carnal. You're a carnal Christian and you come in here every week after week and eventually you'll get saved. Well, what if tomorrow never comes? Then the blood's on your hand, pastor. Because yeah, yeah. you've allowed something that's in, in, in impurity to come into your church that could pollute and disrupt somebody else's spiritual battle that they're dealing with. They may be dealing with a sexual uh, problem that that they need help for and they've been delivered for, but, they've, but they are on a pursuit for to be delivered. And you've got these other people who are just are perverted and you don't even care. So it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. It does matter. Paul said it right here. It's clear. Put them out of church. Yeah, yeah. And I want to deal with that, that more. We're definitely going to be talking on that subject more. Um, so what the enemy seeks to do when you are done with church, number four, discouragement mm. and deception. Mm. I'm so disappointed. You, you will fall into discouragement and deception mm. because you are more prone to fall into deception if you are not a part of a body of believers who are going to say, hey, no, this is a lie. Don't believe this. This is not the word of God. Iron it's not being a watchman. Iron sharpens iron. That's what a pastor is. Mm -hmm. Watchman over your soul. Yeah. They should be telling you, they should be warning you of these things. They, when you go to church, you should be hearing about this in these 5,000 seat churches they, so that they can get saved, so they can be protected. We're trying to protect you. That's what this is all about. It's not to hurt you. That's right, right. Iron sharpens iron. Proverbs 27, 17. It, it, in other words, we sharpen mm. each other, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and, and we make each other better. Uh, if you are around true believers, I'm mm -hmm. about true believers, you will be encouraged, okay? So uh, Galatians 6, 9. Uh, Let us not grow weary we while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of the faith. You know, it's like right. It's how like, can somebody do good to you if you're not around them? How correct. can somebody says how can they encourage you? How good, can they, especially well, to the household of faith, people won't have an opportunity to do that if you uh, isolate yourself. Ephesians four eleven through fourteen. He himself gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the tr 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 to the unity of the faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a per perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, but the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Right, by the trickery of mm. men. So how can you receive of others' gifts? How mm. can others receive yeah. of your gifts? Right. How can you get equipped for the work of the ministry? This yeah. is one of the things that church is for. How can you come to the unity of faith and to full maturity? Again, this is what this scripture is saying. How can you keep from being deceived? Ooh. How can you grow up in the Lord? Yeah. Okay. Especially if you're sitting, if you're sitting under false doctrine or false teaching, it is so easy to be to, to, to be deceived. 
and we've been there, guys. Or being by yourself. No, we can't blame. You know what? I don't blame this guy in Chicago or wherever. I I blame myself for allowing my ignorance, for my lack of knowledge. See, my people will perish for lack of knowledge. So I can't blame them for what they are. I mean, if I didn't have enough discernment, a word in me, to be able to say, this guy, what are we doing under this ministry? Because this is, well, it's not a ministry, it's a sinistry. So if we put ourselves under the sinistry, yep. under the sinisters, right. what are we going to reap? A tragic life. I tell my kids all the time, I said, if you hang with losers, what does that make you? It makes you a loser. If you hang with people who are sexually immoral, if you hang with people who are smoking dope and doing drugs, what does that make you? It makes you the same. So you can't point fingers at them when you've allowed yourself to partake, partake in unfruitful works of darkness. Anyway. Wow. All right, so number five, what the enemy seeks to do when you are done with church. Mm. Guys, and this is really the most the important word, yeah. one, that it is a very good chance that you could fall away <laughs> from God by falling into sin. Well, Veronica, because, I just want to say this, because this is perfect. I mean, I, I run into people all the time in my car yeah. that have fallen away from God, and they use this yeah. Jordan Peterson guy that has information saying it's like, yeah. well, wait a minute, what if what if somebody in Africa never heard the gospel? Well, I can disprove you, sir. There are missionaries who are called to go in the middle of the good jungle. Try. <laughs> yeah, good try. And, 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 and you're going to bet your soul on this idiot that's telling people that. Casting doubt. Casting doubt yeah. into people's lives. And I and I challenge you, Mr. Philosopher, okay, what book have you read or any book that you have written ever have had over centuries the writings of that book have come to pass and are still coming to pass. That's right. None of your books, sir. That's right. Okay. Amen. Amen. So other believers can help hold us accountable by encouraging us to continue in good works. Guys, that is huge, okay? Mm. Because we do grow weary while doing good. Absolutely. Okay? And we need someone there to encourage us to sure. keep going and keep serving the Lord. So being isolated causes us to be selfish mm. and have bad judgment. Mm -hmm. And I'll prove this to you in Proverbs 18, 1. A man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. Yeah. He rages against all wise judgment. Wow. So Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. Guys, I'm going to leave you with this. Let us consider one another in order to stir up love. Guys, this love has to be stirred up in us. Okay? So he's saying that it's other people, other believers that do that. This love has to be stirred up in us. These good works have to be stirred up, all right? We don't just do this stuff on our own. We do it because God prompts us and also because true believers challenge us to do these things, okay? So not do, it says here not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. That just means coming together fellowshipping with one another. It does not have to be in a church building. Again, it can be at a, a coffee shop. It can be uh, in a home. It can be, I, I mean, a lot of people are just, con you know, connecting online. But again, don't make that your church. Guys, You, we have to have the this physical and human touch, okay? So it says, as is the manner of some, it's the manner of some right now more than ever. People are disconnected from the body of Christ. And they say that they're Christians, okay? Um, but exhorting one another, again, encouraging each other in good works. And it says, and so much more. So even more importantly, as the day approaching. What day is that? The day of Christ. Because Jesus is is coming back but there is a slew of deception that's going to come before that time and we don't want to fall into this deception and fall away from the Lord 
my goodness, Veronica, it's really powerful stuff. So you know what, if that's you today, and you, you've been hurt, and you've been burnt, and you've been discouraged, and you've been, you've, you've taken your, your situation and your experience out on your own, on yourself really, you've taken it out on your faith, you've taken it out, you've walked away from the faith because of men. You know what, today is your day to change that. Because there is a true church. That's right. You know what? Yes. And, and you, you yes. know what? We're not the only ones. There are others. You just yes. gotta find them. <laughs> gotta search. You know what? Few of them that find it. You know, that's, we're talking about the narrow path. Yeah. Few find it. Few. Not everybody. So you know what? Be that one today. And we leave you with that. We leave you. We encourage you in the name of Jesus that you find the true church that'll change in the course of your life in your spiritual life with Christ. We love you. Loving you to the truth here at Higher Place Church. God bless you.